Piddles and Jelly Spoons, welcome back to Badger Works. Today, this. <laughs> and this. Uh, these are masks. As you can see, masks apparently are de rigueur at the moment. Um, so the missus made some fabric masks for us. Uh, I'm, to be honest, I generally just use a respirator. Um, but, uh, and they're nice, you know, they do the job. But I thought I'd do something just to jazz them up a little bit. So I got these. Uh, these came from a website called... Um, I don't know if it's meant to be Game Body, but it's spelled Gambody. G-A-M-B-O-D-Y. Uh, I'll put a link in the in the description. Um, at the time, I got these a little while ago. They were, they were giving these designs away for free. I don't know if they still are or not, but they were. Um... Now, the, obviously, the STLs are not mine to distribute, so don't ask me for the STLs because the answer will be no. Or in fact, there won't be an answer. I'll just ignore you. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so um, basically, this one is based on uh, Immortan Joe from the Mad Max Fury Road films, film, and uh, this one in uh, the Doom character from the video games. And today, I am going to paint them up. So let's get on with it. So just to look at this Doom one first of all, uh, this is going to be the simpler of the two. Um, this is going to have an undercoat uh, and a top coat and some paint chipping. Uh, so I won't be spending as much time on this one. Uh, the Immortan Joe will be slightly more complicated because it has a lot more colours on it. So let me just talk you through what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm not doing this exactly the same as the film, I have to say. Um, so before people start angrily reaching for the keyboard saying I've done it wrong, don't bother because I'm doing it the way I want to do it, not the way, you know, anyway. Uh, <laughs> so in the film, the whole of this part here is very dark and the metal is quite bright. Um, what I'm going to do is do it slightly differently. I want it to look more like bone. Um, so like the, this, this like jawline and around the top here, I'm going to do that more kind of bony if you like um, and the metal I want it to be a bit more distressed so not not as shine, shiny and chrome shall we say pardon the expression um, and then obviously the teeth will just do you know teeth like tooth like um, obviously in the film this has pipes coming off of it which this one doesn't have um, because you know it's not meant for that uh, the idea of this is it's going to go over a fabric mask as I say the missus made some masks that um, are three layers of fabric the middle layer is uh, like a micro mesh um, uh, uh, fabric that's basically the same stuff they put in surgical masks so um, there's that uh, so to start with I'm going to give both of them I'm going to start on this part of the skull but this one I'm going to do the undercoat the same color so I'll do this at the same time um, but these are both going to get started off with our old favourite XF55 deck tan. So, let's get on with it. Um, I also just want to talk briefly about the airbrush that I'm going to use. This is uh, one that you don't see me use very often. Um, this is a, well, the, this one I got is Draper branded, but you can get the exact same brush from various different people. Um, it's uh, a side feed uh, trigger brush. Uh, and the reason I'm using this one is it's got a, uh, a big nozzle in it. It's got a, a zero, I can't remember if it's 0 0.4, 0 0.5, I think it's 0 0.4. Um, but it's got a, a big nozzle in it and it's got a big cup, uh, which means you can put a lot of paint in and put a, a, you know cover a large area quickly, which is kind of what we're aiming for with this particular build. So this is what I shall be using. All right, let's give a start on this. I'll try and keep it under the camera as much as I can, but we'll just have to see how it goes. So to start with, I'm just going to uh, go around all the kind of bony bits with the uh, the deck tan, just as like a base coat. I'm actually going to put this on fairly heavy because I don't want to have to go with too many coats. So. Right, 
Right, I'll do the rest of this and we'll come back. Right, so that's the uh, the deck tan on, and I've done just for reference. I've done the the uh, doom mask as well. That's just like a base coat now, so that's pretty much done for now. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is start doing uh, the metal and do some shading. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm not going to bother cleaning the airbrush out in between each colour because there's there's not really any point. I'm just going to work to, like to darker and darker browns. So the next one I'm going to use is this uh, XF64 red brown. Okay, now uh, I'm going to do. I'm going to start shading these areas on the side here, but I'm also going to do a bit of shading around um, the teeth and that as well. So. And it just goes to show that you can actually get quite good results with a brush like this. You know, even with this sort of fairly huge needle, <laughs> you can still get. Uh, you can still do some quite delicate work. I'm just going to go in between his teeth. Okay, I'm also going to go and uh, do start doing the metal bits as well. I'll do the rest of the metal bits and then we'll come back. Right, so that's the first uh, layer of brown on. And what I'm going to do now is, uh, there's still some brown in the brush. And I'm going to add to it some of this rubber black to darken it. Okay, so now I'm going to come in, I'm going to add some more shading around um, the uh, the brown bits, like the, the, the organic bits as it were, and uh, then I'm going to darken the metal bits again. I'm going over this in a fairly haphazard, I want it kind of blotchy, so I'm kind of going over it fairly roughly. Because I, as I say, I want it kind of patchy and a bit grotty looking. Like that, 
you see. I'll do the rest of it and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, right, so I've added the uh, the darker brown now, as you can see. And what I've done now is I've added some more black to the brown to make it even darker. So it's almost like a, a very off, slightly off black. And now I'll just do another quick run of highlights or low lights as the case may be to uh, just to final finish off the the kind of darkening stage of it as it were so same as before just a little bit lighter just mainly concentrating on the edges and the darker shadows I'll do the rest of it and again we'll come back and see what it looks like. Right, so there's all the shading done with the black and everything, or the, the, the dark brown, almost black. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do his teeth with this uh, XF2 flat white. And what I'm also going to do is just do a little bit of highlighting as well, just in various spots. Just kind of hit the high spots with a very light misting of this white. Not a lot, just a, a hint, shall we say. Alright, there we go. You could say I've uh, brushed his teeth. <laughs> yeah, I'll get me coat. Right, and while I've got the white in the brush, I'm going to add a touch of this clear yellow and just go around the edges just to make them look a bit more, um, you know, grotty. Right. I'd say it's kind of awkward doing this in front of the camera, but we'll do what we can. So I'm just putting this on very lightly. Again, just to make his teeth look a bit nasty because otherwise he looks a bit too like he's just been to the dentist doesn't it right so I've just uh, done the, uh, his, the the rivets on his teeth uh, just with some uh, rubber black and now I'm going to go over them with this uh, burnished gold it doesn't have to be perfect I just want to kind of pick up the highlights a little bit Just like that. Right, I'll do the rest of them and then we'll come back. Right, there's his little bit of bling. So what I'm going to do now is use this um, chain mail on a bit of sponge and I'm just going to uh, go over the, the metal bits and uh, kind of spruce them up a little bit. I don't want it too silver but just I just want to like pick out some edges and bits and pieces and then you know sort of build up on it and See how it goes. Kind of like that, you see. 
thing. As I say the one in the film is is almost I think it's almost like like chrome. I don't want it quite as much as that, but I want it just to have a bit of colour to it. Oh, there we go. I'll do it like that. Um, I'll go all over it and then I'll show you what it looks like. Right, I think that will uh, do for that one for now. I think that looks pretty good. I'm quite pleased with that. So I'm just going to let this um, dry while I do the other one. And the last thing it will get is a coat of, uh, of lacquer. But uh, yeah, quite pleased with that. Let's move on to the other one. Right, so here's our, our Doom mask. Um, so it's had the, uh, the deck tan primer coat. Uh, it's also had a couple of good coats of uh, Humbrol uh, clear gloss varnish. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some hairspray on it. And then after the hairspray, it's going to get uh, a couple of coats of this uh, XF62 Olive Drab. Right, so I've just uh, masked this up a bit and given it a coat of hairspray. Um, this is based on the design of the Doom mask from the earlier games, not from the, the latest one. So it's why the design is a little bit different. Uh, so basically the, the body of it is green and then this top part I've masked off, that'll be silver. So I'll just do this the green bits first and then we'll do this the silver afterwards. Right, I'll finish off this green and then we'll come back. Right, so that's that painted green. Uh, I've got a little pot of water here and a sponge and what I'm going to do is soak this and see if we can chip the paint. So it's the same process as normal just on a slightly larger scale. So I'm just wetting it down and uh, we basically want the water to soak through the paint and reactivate the hairspray so that we can chip the paint off. So I'll just keep going over it with a, the wet sponge and hopefully we should start seeing the paint come off. There we go, it's starting to come off there. Look. That's it, there we go. We don't want to go mad with it. I might get me a brush actually. to soak this. Let me just get this good and soaked and then we'll give it another go. It's funny actually the difference between doing this and doing like a, a smaller model is this you can really kind of attack it and, and give it some abuse. Alright, let's try and get some around these edges here. Like I say, I don't, it's not like I want to chip all the paint off but I just want it to just look like it's kind of been in the wars quite literally so what I might do actually let's get a bit of uh, a bit of scotch bright it usually does a good job it's a bit more abrasive there we go that's more like it 
and also because it is abrasive it doesn't need as much effort right that doesn't look too bad does it I'll do the rest of it and we'll come back right so I think what I'll do is I'll just brush paint the top part with the uh, with the chain mail Right, I'll paint the rest of this silver bit and then we'll uh, we'll see what it looks like. Right, that's that bit done. I think that's uh, looking rather good. In fact, I'm not really sure we even need to do anything more to this. I think what I'm going to do now is I've got some um, uh, lacquer. Let me go and get it, hang on. This is uh, High Coat Matte Lacquer. I showed you the uh, the grey primer the other day that I got um, and I was very impressed with that so I thought I'd try some of their matte lacquer and it's pretty good. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and give both of these masks a good spritz of that and then there'll just be a couple of little final touches and I think we'll be done. Right, so here are our two masks with a, a quick flick of the, uh, the lacquer on them. Uh, it will actually get more dull as it, as it cures, but it's um, the nice thing about this is because it's a solvent base, it, it, it's touched dry in seconds. Um, now, the last thing that I want to do is on this mask, and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this Aquacolor Clear Gloss, and I'm just going to go over his teeth with a brush just to make them a bit more shiny because although it's <laughs> I kind of want them to look um, you know like enamel tooth enamel so we'll give it a good bit of this and that should be us finished as I say it's just really just to uh, give his teeth a bit of shine just to make them look a bit more, I know it sounds weird, but a bit more natural. <laughs> and the other thing is as well, although I'm not really going for sort of screen accurate, obviously, it's, uh, it's also the case that the one in the film is, uh, the teeth in that are very glossy. So... which I actually quite like the look of. It's not to say they don't want to be ridiculously shiny, but just it's a nice juxtaposition to the, the flat coat on the rest of it. I might actually um, print another one of these and do it in uh, slice it up and do it in pieces because um, the one in the film you don't you don't see it um, I don't think you see it very often it might only be once actually I'm not sure but I've seen a photo a set photo and it actually hinges um, so yeah Anyway, that will do for that. I think it looks very shiny, and I think we are pretty much done with these now. Yeah, let's wrap this up. And uh, here are our finished articles. Um, I'm quite pleased with how these come out, actually. They're, uh, you know, they're not meant to be, you know, screen accurate or cosplay or anything. They're just a, a bit of fun. Um, just, uh, as I say, something to, to wear over the top of a... A fabric mask and just make it a little bit more <laughs> interesting and if you can't go out and frighten the neighbors children well what can you do so um, yeah nothing uh, really special about these I hope it was um, uh, of interest to some of you uh, it's certainly been a fun little project for me so um, yeah uh, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one cheers bye <laughs>